beautiful name that is. Amen. Let's give God another hand of applause. Happy Resurrection Day. Amen. How many are glad about Resurrection Day? How many really glad about Resurrection Day? Amen. Amen. Such a significant day for each and every one of us, and we praise God for it. Today, we're going to continue our celebration of um, this resurrection, Re Resurrection Day. And I'm going to introduce to you a young man that I really admire that has blessed my life. Um, I guess it was about maybe three, four weeks ago, I saw him with his, his Bible. And I said, hmm, you got your own Bible. And uh, at that time, he proceeded to want to share something with me from the Bible. I said, well, maybe another time, right, another time. But uh, it stayed with me, um, his love uh, for Jesus and um, his love for, for doing what God wants him to do. So I want to bring to you for the very first time the history of this church. We say Master Albert Robinson. Will you come forward? And a very interesting thing that happened this morning, he came down to my office and just to greet me. And I say, oh, we both have on blue, you know, and you know what I say, I never have a bad day in blue. Um, but he came down to greet me and we had our prayer and everything. So Albert, it's in your hands. God bless you. Thank you. Good morning, Abiding Faith Christian Church. My name is Albert D. Robinson. I'm 11 years old, and today I will be talking about the meaning of Easter. Easter is also known as Resurrection Sunday. This is the day when Jesus rose from the dead three days after his crucifixion. We believe that he was crucified on the cross to save us from our sins. We all have sinned, but Jesus was there, and he gave his life for our wrongs. Isaiah 53, verse 10 says, it was, the Lord's, it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. He offered his life to save us from our sins and died doing so. But three days later, he was resurrected. That is what Easter is all about. Jesus' resurrection reveals to us that he will not let us down because he promised that he would rise again, and he did. And in his resurrection, we were given everlasting life, but we cannot have his resurrection without his crucifixion. Matthew 27, verses 33 through 44, talks about how Jesus was treated and crucified on the cross. He was beaten, spat on, offered drinks with gall, and was forced to wear a crown of thorns. His life ended with a piercing in the side. Two days went by with the people's savior gone. But on the third day, he fulfilled his promise of rising from the dead. Matthew 26, I mean, sorry, Matthew 28, verses five through six, talks about an angel of the Lord coming from heaven to go to the tomb. And the angel saying, Mary Magdalene and other Mary, he is not here, he has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Today we are safe from our sins because of the unselfish act that our Savior did. We can now live in heaven with him after our physical bodies pass away. We honor him for his kindness, his boldness, and his willingness to sacrifice himself for us. In addition to Jesus' sacrifice and rebirth, there are festivities that I like to take part in during Easter. Egg hunts, Easter dinner, Easter clothes, painting Easter eggs, and just spending time with family are other ways, other great ways I love to spend Easter Sunday. For example, we hold Easter egg hunts here at our church. They're just a great way for kids, including myself, to enjoy ourselves and have fun. Before I end, I would like to thank Pastor Cowart for allowing me to speak today. And I would like to close with a prayer. Lord, thank you for this wonderful Easter Sunday. Today we worship you because you saved us. You were crucified for us. 
You were beaten, spat on, and even forced to wear a crown of thorns, all to save us, Lord. You gave it all for us, Lord. And today, Resurrection Sunday, you came back to life, fulfilling your promise. You conquered death. And as we stand in the house of the Lord today, enlighten our spirits, Lord. We praise you. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Now I will introduce Brianna. Brianna Robbins.
round of applause. We praise Him, we bless Him, we magnify His name. Paid it all. And we thank God so much for paying it all. Let's just put those requests before the Lord, the things you need God to do for you right now at this very moment. Whisper your prayer request unto Him. God has blessed us with the, the ministry of, of Master Albert Robinson and his sister Brianna Robinson. And we are blessed. And we want to put before the Lord. Everything that we need God to do for us. I say everything because I don't want you to hold back. I want you to trust him and believe him this morning. You paid it all, Lord, and we praise you and we bless you. As we come before you this day, oh Lord, we're just so, so grateful, so thankful. Thankful, thankful for what you have already done and presented through uh, Albert and his sister Brianna. Thank you so much, oh Father. Now, Lord, our requests are before you. Prayers that we've been praying perhaps all week, perhaps all month. Maybe it fell on us today that there needs to be a change. Father God, we give you glory and praise for what you are going to do for answered prayers. We know that you always hear us when we pray. And we thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, I pray you minister to me. Let your ministering angels come and help me minister. I'm praying, God, for the fulfillment of the word of God. I'm praying, God, for the breakthrough. I'm praying for, for miracles, oh, Lord. For that little girl that's in the hospital right now, charity. I'm praying for, for charity, for her miracle right now in the name of Jesus. I am believing you, God. For the miracles now, Lord, that are needed right here in this room, right there where they're, where you're watching virtually. I am believing you, God, for your miracles of healing, of deliverance in the name of Jesus. We bind the hands of the devil. We come against the forces of evil and, and darkness this day, O oh Lord. We come against depression oh father oppression oh father we come against the the wiles and tricks of the enemy we cancel all of the assignments of the devil this morning and we just want you to filter in oh god your good works that you will now lord move by your spirit cause our minds to be focused and at peace in the name of Jesus. And Lord, not just for us do we pray, but for all of our soldiers across this country, those that are around this world that are stationed on guard. I, I pray for them. I pray for that special soldier that you gave to us on Motola while she's in Iraq. I pray for the men and women that are there where she is. I, I just pray, God, you bless our country. Today, oh Lord, in the midst of all the things that are happening around the world, that you move by your spirit. That you look on the people of Ukraine, oh Lord, and for others that are in harm's way. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Move favorably for your people in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory. And wherever you are, can you just lift those hands to Jesus? Can you just lift those hands? This is Resurrection Sunday. We want to bless God and praise God, but can you just lift those hands to the Lord and just tell Him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all you've done, Lord. Thank you for all you have provided. Thank you for all that you have given. Thank you for our health, Lord. For our minds, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless us today, O oh Lord. Bless us today, O oh Lord. Bless us in a big way, in a special way.
for that little boy that's troubled, that little girl that's troubled, for that, that man, that woman that's strung out on drugs, or, or those that are now, Lord, caught in the, in the middle of a mess. God, bless today, redeem today, set free today in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory today, Lord. Your resurrection has not been in vain. We thank you, Lord. You're dying on Calvary and, and getting up, Lord, and rising has not been in vain. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Bless us now, Lord. Bless us now, Jesus. Put your hand on your heart and tell him to bless me, Lord. Make it personal. Bless me. I am in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him praise. Amen. Let's give God another round of applause and thank him. And I need my glasses. Praise the Lord. Amen. I didn't start wearing glasses until I was about 50 years old. Amen. And I'm just challenged with reading. That's it. But we praise God. Amen. And I got a few folks from my family that may be saying something a little differently, but praise God. Amen. This morning's message is this. It's on you. Heard a beautiful message from, from Brother Albert Robinson, but I'm going to bring it in. I'll bring up the, the, the rear. It's on you. Subtitle, mentally fit to take on the cross. Are you mentally fit to take on the cross? It's on you. We give God glory and we give him praise. Scripture that I want to first take you to, which kind of like highlights a lot of what I'm going to say. It's from St. John, the 13th chapter. St. John, the 13th chapter. I'm going to read through, uh, read through the 16th verse. Get an idea of what's going on. And this is, of course, where Jesus is going to, he's, he's preparing to wash his disciples' feet. But how many know there's more to what he's going to do that he's talking about? So in the third verse, it says, Jesus, knowing that the father had handed all things over to him and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, he got up from the supper, laid his outer garments aside and took a towel and tied it. Jesus knowing that the Father had handed all things over to him. Fifth verse says, Then he poured water into the basin, and he began washing the disciples' feet, wiping them with the towel which he had tied around himself. So he came to Simon Peter, and he said to him, Lord, you are washing my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not realize right now, but you will understand later. What I'm doing right now, you may not realize, but you will understand later. And Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Washing of the feet was a customary, um, I say, uh, procedure, if you might say, when someone entered your house. And it was a courteous thing to do. But he said, Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no 
place with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet. Otherwise, he is completely clean and you are clean, but not all of you. Because he's talking to all of the, the disciples as he is, he's gotten up from the table. He says, but not all of you. For he knew that he knew the one who was betraying him. It was for this reason that he said, not all of you are clean. Question, church. He knew that the one was right there in the midst was going to, let's say, set him up. How many of you, if you knew that you were going to die on Friday, you had three days. You had three days and, and you knew it. How many of you would be prepared? I'm not ready to die. But in Jesus' case, it says, knowing the Father had handed all things over to him and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God. If you knew you only had three days, how many of you would, how many would be prepared? Praise God. Just a little thought. Amen. You find out on Wednesday, you're going to die on Friday. Would you be ready? Praise God. He told them not all of you are clean. Then when he had washed his feet, their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again he said to them do you know what I have done for you because you're now not only washing the other disciples feet but you're also washing the one who will betray you well. now this is where it, you might say an act of humility where Jesus is condescending to the lowest level Stooping to the lowest level to wash the disciples' feet. Well, That's where God wants to get us, church. Where we will go, stoop to the lowest level. Amen. And, and, I, and I thought about this. Not can you wash your brother's feet or your sister's feet. But do you desire? Do you desire as an act of humility? And an act of also love, do you or, or do you have a desire? And you remind yourself. Now remember what it said. This is there's one among them that's going to set him up cheaply. 30 pieces of silver, cheaply. And you gotta wash his feet too. You gotta wash the one that you know doesn't like you. You got to watch the one who, who you know has been talking about you. Three doors down in the neighborhood, they've been scandalizing you. You got to wash their feet. You got to wash the feet of the one that's in the same house with you and you refuse to have any kind of communication. You go in one door, you come out the next door and you never speak. Got to wash their feet. Got to wash the preacher's feet. The one that you may not like. And, and, and get used to it, church. Amen. In this world in which we live, you're going to find that somebody don't like you. You're going to find that somebody doesn't like you. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to stay still uh, or, or just uh, mourn and, 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 oh, they don't like you? What are you, are you going to move forward? Listen, Jesus knew that one was going to betray him. He didn't stop. But he what? Proceeded 
doing what the Father had called him to do. I'll read the 12th verse. It says, Then when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done? I read that for you. You call me teacher and Lord, and you are correct, for so I am. So if the Lord and teacher wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an, an example so that you also would do just as I did for you. How many are willing to be an example? Well, he said, I'm, I'm going to be the example. I'm going to stoop to the lowest level and wash your feet. I did this as an example. Can you follow what I've done? Or is it not to you a part of the manuscript or your play on things? Can you follow what the Lord has done and wash somebody else's feet? And you know you may have jokes and all other kind of things to say, but can you wash their feet? Do you desire to humble yourself in love? Because anything that's not motivated by love, church, is an error. It, it, don't, don't do it because pastor's watching. Don't do it because somebody else is just checking to see if you're going to follow. Do it in love. Be motivated by love. Whenever we do things and not motivated by love, we're in error. That's sin. So think about it. He says, truly, truly, I say to you in the 16th verse, I truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. And I think that me makes a, a lot of sense. He said, I'm not better than you. I'm, I don't see myself as better than you. As a pastor, I don't see myself as better than you. Amen. Servant first. Praise God. Servant first. And normally when you find yourselves thinking you are bet better than someone else, you're going to have problems throughout your relationship and um, communications with that person. So you have to be very careful of that. Isaiah 9, 6. And I'm going to cross-reference this for what, what it says in verse 3 of, um, of John 13. It says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had handed all things over to him. And Isaiah 9, 6, it says, for a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. And the government, all things, will rest upon his shoulders. Church. That's why I wrote the subtitle of this sermon, Mentally Fit. Mentally Fit. We're talking about mentally ready to carry the cross. Because if I'm not ready to wash my brother's or my sister's feet, if I'm not mentally in, my, in the mind that God wants me to be in, if I know that there are responsibilities that are resting upon me as a father of a house, and I've got to do my due diligence and make sure that the house is taken care of, I've got to be mentally ready for it. I can be physically built. Amen. And have all the stamina and the strength, but my mind can be as weak as I don't know what. And I won't be able to stand against the pressure that I might need to stand to defend my family. So the Bible says, and the government will rest upon his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. All things right now are resting on you, Lord. All things. All things. The Father had handed over all things, had handed all things over to him. What a, my, a, a, a huge responsibility. That's a huge responsibility. The world resting upon his shoulder. That's a huge responsibility. And I'm, I must say, you got to be mentally fit. Amen. 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 Mentally fit to take on the cross. Yes. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. 
because we don't want to work just for ourselves, but for the cause of Christ, I want to give of myself just as he gave of himself that I might have life. And for the cause of Christ, I want to be mentally fit so that I can take on my responsibilities, not only as a pastor, but as a father, so that what the house can be well taken care of. Amen. And we know that if God com comes before us, everything is going to be all right. I read something like that the other day, how important it was for um, you. You are the head. You are the father. But sometimes daddy needs to say everything's going to be all right to that little girl or maybe to someone in the family that's not feeling real confident. Everything is going to be all right. Amen. We need to hear that. We need to hear that because the responsibility falls on our shoulders. In Isaiah, in, excuse me, in Matthew 16, Matthew 16, 24 through 27, Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself. So if you have problems washing, somebody's feet you haven't denied yourself he must deny himself take up his cross mentally fit take up his cross and follow me for whoever wants to save his life and lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it for what good Will it do a person if he gains the whole world? Say you bypass washing the feet. Say you bypass washing the one who's been talking about you. What, what, what good would it do for you to gain the whole world but forfeit your soul? Because the right thing was in order to be sanctified by God's truth and to humble yourself and even show forth love and forgiveness, you have to wash feet. And for all those that say, I'll forgive, but I won't forget, how can you truthfully, honestly say that you have been transformed by the renewing of your mind when you still harbor and hold things against me? Maybe you're not the one to wash feet. Maybe you need to go back on the assembly line so God can chisel away and chip away at everything that's not like him. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. You're going to forfeit your soul for it? No. What will a person give in exchange for his soul? How many would exchange heaven? Huh, forget it. How many would be willing to exchange their soul for the ways of the world? Let me tell you something. The world is out to keep or plays for keeps. Just like the devil plays for keeps. You may think that you're just tapping it and you're just tipping toe around the sand and you really didn't get that involved in it but trust me the spirit of it the spirit that enticed you will be that same spirit that will kill you and i'm not saying the physical killing i'm talking about the physical i'm not talking about the spiritual your soul dies your soul is, is not. So would you compromise or would you exchange your soul for the world? For the son of man is going to come in the glory of his father with his angels. And will repay every person according to his deeds. He's going to pay or repay everyone according to their deeds. Where do you fall in this story today? It's on you. Mama can't get you there. Grandmother, who was a state missionary, she can't get you there. Daddy might have been a bishop, pastor. He can't get you there. It's on you. Mentally fit to take on the cross. Yes, this is resurrection day. He has arisen. Amen. Amen. Now that he has 
arisen in each and every one of our lives. We must pick up our cross and follow him. Not haphazardly, not being shifty in your, your mind and, and you know questioning, can I go? Well, I'll go after, I'll follow him after the big party or I'll follow him after I have my one night fling. I, then I'll make up my, is it for us to, to settle on compromising, losing our soul for a little short time pleasure? God is good, church. God is good, church. We got to be mentally fit. Mentally fit. I can physically, you know, probably carry the cross. But mentally, am I willing? Do I desire? To take up my cross and follow him. I, you know, before salvation, I was enjoying the world. I was having a good time. But that wasn't what God wanted. And I had to denounce that side of life. I had to put away all those childish ways. Um, serious business and let God knew and know that I meant business as well. You're not really serious about your life that you're living when you're not following him, are you? Someone said this to me, and I'm going to close and have prayer. A lot of people think that going to church is following God. A lot of people think going to church, I'm following God. You have to pick up one cross. You dress, form, and fashion, and all the other things. You go into church, but you're not committed. So today I'm talking to all of those. If you do not have a relationship, going to church means nothing unless you have a relationship with the Father. Praise God. A relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is what we're talking about. Amen. Mentally fit to take on the cross. When we see our day approaching, we should do what good we can to help as many as we can. Amen? That's why we wash feet. That's why we help others. And let me tell you this. I want to share this one last point. The more malicious we perceive our enemies to be, the more industrious and focused we should be prepared so what that says is, if I'm going to take up this cross and follow him, Jesus knew that there was one that was out to get him or set him up. The more malicious that you know that people are, you perceive that they, they may be, that's when you get more industrious. That's when you vigorously pursue the cross. All right? He could have stopped when he, when he, when he knew because... He told him when he went back to the table, he said, do what you must do quickly. But he didn't let him or let that situation stop him. So I'll say that again. The more malicious we may perceive our enemies to be, the more industrious or vigorously we've got to stay focused and so we can be prepared for that day. Prepared. Are you prepared for the day? Amen. Amen. This is our resurrection day. But are you prepared? Are you vigorously prepared? Amen. Amen. Ready to take up that cross and follow it. Are you the little one? Are you the, the little one that's just kind of like tipping around, you know, still doing what you want to do? If you're going to deny yourself today, then let's all stand for prayer. It's on you. It's on you. It is Resurrection Sunday. But now that Jesus has died and arisen, are you mentally fit to carry your cross? Can't carry the cross and you complain all the time. 
nothing's right. I can't do nothing. And you complain about everything. Uh, you can't carry the cross and you complain all the time. Something about growing up and, and maturing, and when you get there, you will know it. You will know it because what little, the little things that used to blow you up and, and cause you to click, as they say, and go off on people, when you mature, they won't bother you anymore. If they don't speak, it won't bother you anymore. If they didn't celebrate your birthday, it won't bother you anymore. You'll know when you reach that, that level of maturity. Guess what, church? It's not based on age. You don't have to be old and up in age before that maturity comes. You can be eight years old just like Samuel. And understand that I've got to do what God wants me to do. You can be just like Jesus. And told his mom and dad, he said, I must be about my father's business. So if you're waiting, if you're small, and, and um, I pray that we had a good example with little, uh, as I would say, little Albert, but Albert Robinson. If you're waiting on that age and saying that I'm a teenager, I want to focus on my teenage years. I want to just caution you. Amen. I'm a living testimony that those teenage years can be reckless. That those teenage years will keep you in trouble. Those teenage years, not what you might say your glory days. But you might want to slow down. You might want to slow down. So it's not based on age, church. Five-year-old can, can, can make, make that decision and say, I want Jesus. Amen? God is good. God is good. It's on you this morning. It's on you. It's on you to vigorously prepare and give it your best. Let's pray. Father God, we glorify you and we praise you. Lord knows I want to be mentally fit to carry the cross. Lord knows we want to be mentally fit to carry this cross. We thank you, Lord, for doing your job and carrying the cross and pursuing now, Lord, the work that was before you. We thank you. Now it's on us to do our part. It's on us to be an example as you were an example to your disciples when you washed their feet. It's on us. And I pray, Lord, that we won't skirt the responsibility or hide from it or run from it but we'll meet the responsibility as a believer, as a Christian, head on in the name of Jesus. Lord, where the world has put so many things in our view to weaken us and to distract us and take our focus and our attention off of you, Lord, we pray that you'll keep us now, Lord, our minds in peace, oh God, our focus on you, oh God, and all the other things that are happening around us will not consume us and take us by surprise. Cover us with your blood in the name of Jesus. And how about you do, you do this, church? For all of you that are watching virtually or in the sanctuary. How about let's stand proxy right now for someone else. Maybe you have someone that is, is in trouble again. Maybe you know someone that cannot break uh, some of the bad habits that they, they have picked up. Maybe you know someone who is, is being uh, mistreated or abused. Uh, maybe you know someone who just needs a, a mom or a dad to hold them and say, it's going to be all right. I want you to stand proxy. Whisper that person's name before the Lord. 
Just ask God to turn favorably toward them. See, it's so important that you vigorously prepare yourself so that others can see Jesus through you. Cover us with your blood from this day forward and those that we have put before you, Lord. We're looking for great change. We're looking for uh, dedication. We're looking for salvation. We're looking for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we pray you move by your spirit. Hallelujah. And have your most holy way in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. It's on you. It's on you. Give God a big round of applause. Thank you. Praise God. I want you to just keep in mind, huge responsibility. Amen. You can't break under pressure. All right? You can't panic. Huge responsibility. That maturity is important as you grow in Jesus Christ. I'd like for all of you to prepare your hearts to give this morning, uh, this Resurrection Sunday. Give your best. Uh, something that would represent your thanks unto God. Uh, for all that he has done for you. Show your appreciation for the risen Christ who died on Calvary that we all might have life. Amen. Praise the Lord. We were in weight in the balance to be successful. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. those gifts, you can go to our website, www.abidingfaithcc.org. You can hit the giving tab and give your tithe, give your offering, and for those who are watching virtually, you can give something that represents your appreciation for this res Resurrection Sunday. Give your best. Thank God for each and every one of you who um, opened your hearts today to uh, watch Abiding Faith Christian Church, and may God bless you tremendously. Amen.